When the fuck did we get to Amonkhet? We're not on Amonkhet, dumbass. Are you sure this isn't Amonkhet? Because this looks a lot like Amonkhet. The set's not even out yet. Oh yeah. Boy, I sure am looking forward to playing with that card that probably got leaked yesterday, maybe, I think. Boone, I swear to fucking Christ, I will kick you in the balls if you don't get in there and get the Orb of Chaos. And you're not going in with me. You know, as much as I'd like to make sure that you don't find a way to fuck this one up too, how the fuck am I supposed to fit through the door? Eh, good point. Now get in there before I make MTR straight in five, four, three. Huh. Roomy. Greetings, traveler. Oh, hey, doodle. What the hell is a doodle? Hey, wait a minute. I didn't write a cameo for you in this video. You seem to have been confused with someone else. I am the guardian of the Orb of Chaos. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Mm, no, you still look like doodle, sorry. Whatever. I presume you're here seeking the orb. What? Oh, yeah, right. Plot. Yeah, that thing. Well, in order for me to allow you to become the orb's bearer, you must complete a trial. A trial that will test your strength, dexterity, and wisdom. Probably the other D&D stats, too. It's a fucking commentary, isn't it? What? No, that doesn't make any sense. How does a commentary test your strength? I have an obstacle course! Is that a giant nose? Yes. Now I suggest you get started if you want to get the Orb of Chaos in a timely fashion. Fine, whatever, let's do this. <sighs> Congratulations! You've won a trip to Bermuda. What? Wait. What about the Orb of Chaos? Oh, that? Right, there's one more obstacle for that. Okay. Fine. What is it? A commentary. Fa Get down! Fine! This is fine. I have no problem with doing a commentary. Are you certain? You seemed rather miffed about it just now. Eh. All right then. Ladies and gentlemen, allow Boone to introduce Felicia Fan 444. What? What is that name? Just. It, it sounds like a troll account. Are you making me commentate on an obvious troll? Well, no, but I am making you defend Felicify. You are a fucking sadist. I believe that would be your cue to begin. You know, despite 2016 being one of the worst years for the human race, I feel as if there's a good amount of people out there that actually grew for the better as the years went on. A lot of content creators feel like they're actually starting to go somewhere with their content and are looking to continue expanding their horizons as they go into the year 2017. Except for one. One that has continued to essentially not only degrade faster than that of Donald Trump's hairline, but also attempt to drag as many people down with him as possible. That is, of course, Puppy Daddy Senpai himself, Verlissify. Oh, um, I see. This is gonna be one of those commentaries, isn't it? Yeah, as much as I give zero fucks about Verlissify's content, I am against anyone calling someone wrong just because of who they are. Now, granted, the first part could be seen as just a setup to say the video you're covering shows the lack of improvement, but uh... Never before have I ever met such a spoiled shut-in of a brat one who, despite the fact that he's a lesser human being, that feels that he needs to wear a custom-made dog collar in order to feel special, will still attempt to look down on everyone like he was born for greatness. Yeah, the whole lesser human being thing does kind of indicate that you're making this video solely because it's for Lissify. Now, I'm not gonna care if you make good points. I don't think who you're covering or how you're covering them matters nearly as much as the points you bring to the table, so... Please, go ahead. Seriously, this is the world we live in, people. It's fucking insane. Regardless, he's scum, who has essentially survived off of taking as many petty pot shots at the community who threw him into the trash faster than Brawl's competitive scene died out. I'm sorry, but did you just chastise him for petty insults directly after calling him scum? I mean, call me Chainsaw Charlie, Mick, but that sounds pretty hypocritical of you. Seriously, it'd be one thing if your wording didn't indicate that you're trying to project the moral high ground, but from my perspective, as someone who admittedly doesn't know shit about what Verlissify did to deserve exile from the Smogin community that you claim he has, 
maybe he was ridiculed unjustly and is just firing back. I don't fucking know. It's your job to educate your audience, man. Otherwise, you're pretty much just speaking to an echo chamber for what amounts to a minute and a half so far. Holy fuck, butthurt rants are so easy to cover. This isn't just a rant. He's actually going to cover a video, you know. I'm sorry, what? And this lovely little creation is one of said many pot shots. Titled, Hacking Ruins Everything in Big Bold Letters as a Desperate Means of Feeling Important, this little train wreck features many of the standards found in your typical Velocify video regarding other people, including assassination of character, blatant hypocrisy, the misuse of citations and terminologies, blatant misuse of the English language, and of course, the biggest and most common problem with Velocify videos, a complete lack of any context. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll keep all those things you pointed out in mind for later, but l let's just go over those real quick in relation to the first two minutes of this video. Assassination of character. You literally called him a lesser human being. I don't care how scummy he acts, nobody deserves to be called less of a human being than someone else. Blatant misuse of the human language. O okay, well, you haven't done that one yet, at least. I'll give you that. Constant hypocrisy. Well, I already pointed out your hypocrisy once in this video, but let's go round the bend again, considering you've already made six videos on the guy in the past year before now. You think maybe all you're doing is giving his toxicity more of an audience if you're going to obsess like that? This is a whopping 41% of all of your content, and you want to say he's the one who takes every opportunity to take a pot shot? Considering what this video is on and what you posted two weeks before this came out, yeah, I'd say there's a correlation between you seeing an opportunity to go after Velocify and actually going after Velocify. Complete lack of context. You mean like the tweet you showed? I'm, I mean, you said he attacked a community that threw him out, and here you are not explaining what he did to deserve that. I mean, sure, you still got a chance to explain it to someone uneducated on the situation like myself, but then again, I have a feeling you're not going to do that, and I've already watched the entire video. Seriously, these kind of topics appear so often you might as well make a bingo card out of them. Anyways, this lovely little train wreck is possibly one of the most absolute worst videos he's made on the subject, because as opposed to attacking a single person and failing to prove a point, He's now attempting to tackle a large group of people at once with probably the biggest evidence drought ever put forward by many of his masterpieces. So, now that you know the hell we're about to dive into, let's go head first into this unapologetic mess. Okay, but before we do that though, I found your blatant misuse of the human language! O okay, well, it's not what you were really talking about, but good lord is your grammar bad and your wording such a stretch at times. Like. You refer to the aforementioned aspects of his video as topics when they're really only topics if you're talking about how he does or does not do these things. They certainly aren't what he's talking about, so they aren't topics of his video. And also for one of the most absolute worst videos, even if you put absolute where it's supposed to be in that sentence, you are still saying most worst. I mean... You even cut your audio there. I can tell you cut your audio. I have an ear for these sorts of things. So you cut, and you kept in shitty grammar that sounds shitty. And Yeah, you can say I'm being a little bit pedantic right now, but at the same time, I want you to stop talking so you can stop butchering the English language. Before the video begins, I would like to make a quick note that this is not just about hacking is cheating, therefore bad. This is going to be a deeper look into how hacking pretty much affects everything in Pokemon and then absolutely destroys the balance and flow of the game, thus pretty much ruining it for everyone that isn't hacking, and even the hackers themselves, because they end up complaining about some really interesting stuff. Well, I'd certainly hope that this isn't about hacking is cheating, because, well, that'd be a pretty damn blatant lie now, wouldn't it? You have already fucked yourself. Y you have literally fucked yourself right at the beginning. You, you know what? Continue with your bullshit about how breaking the rules of the game is not breaking the rules of the game. I'm all ears. I've been over this in a previous video, but simply put, if you're not gaining an advantage in something, then an action being used cannot be considered cheating. As that's what cheating is. Gaining an advantage. Pokemon isn't a race. 
It doesn't matter how long it takes you to get there, because nothing matters until you actually get to the end of that line. If they get there quicker than you, oh well, you lost like, what, four hours of time? Make it up by staying up late. I don't know, and I don't really care. That argument is faulty. So thank you for not opening up with an argument that literally destroys itself. Okay, wow, this is uh, worse than I thought. All right, let me break down why this is dumb. The actual word cheat does in fact mean advantage, yes, but that advantage doesn't have to be a huge one in order for it to be cheating. To use code that is outside of the game to acquire the team of Pokemon you want for competitive battling is actually cheating because you are still breaking the rules because the rules of a video game are its code and when you modify the code of the game, even in this way, you are breaking those rules. I can also debunk your point about it not being a race with your own loss of time point. While true, I do agree with you that this is an unimportant thing to focus on, unless that gap of time is significant enough to interfere with research on how to construct that team, or to interfere with playtesting a team, it is a small advantage to be gained. And trust this from a Magic player and someone who was the top five in a state in the Pokemon TCG at one point, those small percentages of advantage do matter in a competitive game. That's actually kind of what blows your argument about focus attack dash canceling out of the water as well. Just because you have an advantage in one area doesn't mean you're going to be better overall. No, Felicia Van, competitive gaming isn't just a race, but the race to have techniques and knowledge that other people don't have is part of the equation. And that is what you're refusing to admit with this entire viewpoint. Not just statement, not just statement. I wrote down statement, but no, it's the, the entire viewpoint. Fucking ridiculous. Secondly, yes people, this is the level of pretentiousness that the video is going to have throughout its entirety. Hacking in Pokemon ruins the game for everyone. Do, do I even need to remark on how utterly stupid that is? Actually, I'll have a point to make on it later on when the topic returns, so for now, I digress. You're damn right you digress, you just added context to the video that doesn't fucking exist. Seriously, that little text blurb? Yeah, he didn't even say that. He was doing what an academic might call stating his thesis. His thesis statement for the video is that hacking supplies a detriment to the game overall from more than just a competitive aspect. And then you bring up that text blurb, even though he literally said in that thesis that it ruins the game for hackers as well, thus negating that piece of snark from the word go. By the way, you also called it the context of the statement. Do you not know what the word context means? Because what you just supplied was an interpretation, not context. No, no, no. The context of the statement would be, you know, the rest of the fucking video. So sit down and shut up. Secondly, yes, people, this is the level of pretentiousness that the video is going to have throughout its entirety. Hacking in Pokemon ruins the game for everyone. Do, do I even need to remark on how utterly stupid that is? Actually, I'll have a point to make on it later on when the topic returns, so for now, I digress. Scrolling through the features and seeing what is affected by hacking, and the first one is just going to be rated battles and online interactions. That competitive play for Pokemon should not be accessible day one, and that the first rated season of battles should not have perfect teams or even somewhat competitive teams, and it just leads to a lot of toxicity in the community. Alright, two things. One, the only one who has even remotely started any kind of wide-level toxicity is you with garbage like this. Always looking for something to complain about, or looking for the biggest possible PokeTuber to say something about you so that you can make some revenue off of them. You're a lying, cancerous, and annoying little fly who needs to constantly buzz around others because you'd instantly be forgotten otherwise. You know your text had a much better point than you did for once? I mean, yeah, two months is plenty of time to have a competitive team with in-game means if that's what you want to do. Hell, one month is plenty of time to do that, really. Not necessarily the most optimized team on the planet, sure, but one that's good enough to get a feel for the meta and make something a bit better to adjust for it. He started out good, too. Day one is too quick for something like that. I do agree with him there. Let's face it, this is still an RPG, but month one? Yeah, that's fine. But then you want to go on a tirade about Varlicify being toxic, 
when he said that the race for competitive battling leads to toxicity in the community. Now, personally, I disagree with that statement. As someone who has played and does play multiple games that have people rushing to adjust to new metagame strategies, in many cases before the changes to it even officially happen, I mean, you could argue that there is toxicity, but I would argue that the toxicity would be there whether the information was already available or not. And instead of just settling for debunking his point, sir, you decide to take more pot shots at him. Add another nickel to the hypocrisy jar. Second, you do not determine how long it takes people to obtain their teams, alright? You determine how long it takes you to obtain a team for battle. And seeing as the world doesn't revolve around you, gee, what a shocker, you don't get a say in anything regarding this topic. Wait, you mean that because the world doesn't revolve around him, his opinion, all of his opinion is invalid? Well, fuck. Commentary over. I don't- Hey, hey, don't look at me. I'm not the one who said it. The world doesn't revolve around me, so therefore what I have to say about a subject doesn't mean anything. And in turn, I can simply debunk the Felicia fan the same way. The world doesn't revolve around him, so what he has to say in this video doesn't matter in the slightest. Okay, you're not seriously- Of course not! That's the most retarded logic I've ever heard! He literally just said that in order for someone to have a say on something, the world has to revolve around them! S spoilers. That means that no one can say anything about anything. So shut your yap, you chuckle fuck. Fucking pussy. 48 from his in-game team. He wants to go on the battle spot, but because of that, he gets absolutely slaughtered by all the hat Pokemon that shouldn't even be available for weeks and months after. And then it also destroys the idea of being a Pokemon trainer, and it undermines a lot of the other gameplay mechanics that are involved, such as breeding, going through the battle tree, and getting access to all the other items and stuff in the game, because you can just create them instantly through hacking. Yes, it's completely ignoring what is basically considered the main issue with comparative Pokemon, and that's the entrance fee. Again, I have talked about this before, said video can be found through a link in the description. And since I don't feel like repeating myself on a topic I've already discussed, I'll just give you a quick paraphrasing of my previous thoughts. Basically, breeding is essentially a useless waste of time. You don't gain anything from it, there is no skill involved, it's one of the many issues the Pokemon faces when it comes to actually wanting to become a competitive game. By skipping the breeding, it's essentially wanting to play Pokemon like an out-of-the-box comparative game that it keeps trying to portray itself as. And I'll be damned if I don't mention that Game Freak is well aware of this, hence why hyper training exists to boost IVs and keep the need to breed to an all-time low. Yeah, natures and hidden power totally don't exist, guys. Those aren't things you get from properly breeding your Pokemon. And there's so many flaws with your argument about Pokemon being an out-of-the-box competitive game, it makes me want to shoot myself in the nads. Seriously, the game forces you to go through the single-player campaign before giving you the vast majority of features that will support your competitive play. That alone should tell you that this clearly isn't meant to be out-of-the-box competitive. Yeah, they try to make it so that your breeding doesn't take hours and your ability to play the game in other areas is what gets you to the end of the goal for your competitive team faster. But I would argue that this makes people who hack the game so they can avoid breeding even more pathetic because it's far less of a time sink from actually playing the game than it would be if you were still breeding for IVs, which reminder, you don't have to do that anymore. And considering your first argument is built on the foundation of circumventing things that aren't part of the core gameplay, I'd love to see you justify circumventing the battle tree, which is actually part of the core gameplay, because battle. So go on, big shot. Lay it on me. Also, the battle tree is not a mechanic. It's a feature. It's, it's a feature. It's a feature. Deja vu. I just been in this place before. I mean, if you want to be pedantic about the whole thing and pointlessly use media clips, then yeah, we can be we, we can be pedantic about the whole thing and just pointlessly use media clips. That's fine. But that doesn't really address what he was saying at all. I'm, you could argue that it being a feature doesn't really exclude it from being a mechanic used to interface with the battle points feature in the game. I don't know. It's like 3 a.m. I should finish scripting this tomorrow. I'll get back to you on that one. Fucking pussy. Hold up, hold up. 
while the point that hacking videos barely get the viewership to constitute even 5% of the player base, and you do a good job of showing that the only evidence he shows does a poor job of indicating the staggering numbers that he claims, I want you to keep in mind that he says that it's not a lot of people doing this because of percentages. It's going to bite him later. All right, continue. As we branch out into other foreign communities and get a wider scope of what's going on, the hacking problem looks even worse. The morality is lower and the hacking support is much higher. That almost a quarter million views right here. Why do you torture me? He provided an example of a video from someone who gave the tutorial in English and he showed a video with double the viewership. In fact... And how many people, on average, watch a PK Hex guide? Well, unlike Verlis, I decided to run a little search in order to determine what is the maximum amount of viewers for a single video on the topic. And I came to a total of 174,964 for a video created by the Mikey J. That video has 70,000 more viewers than what you claim is the most viewed video on the subject. As a matter of fact, Pokemon Sun and Moon are the highest selling games in the entire franchise. They have sold over 25 million copies. I repeat, 25 million copies. Worldwide. Those are worldwide sales figures, dumbass. Yeah, using only data on videos from those who speak English makes a lot of sense, as you are proven to have done by omitting a foreign language video from your initial result. You know, you know what? No, give me my skip screen back. You don't deserve a skip screen. You don't deserve to get to go to the playground. We're not going to McDonald's. Your research is shoddy as you omit anyone who gets information on how to use PK Hex from elsewhere on the internet or just figures it out for themselves, which I will admit would probably be somewhat of a minority. So don't get on to him for not doing research when you can't do it either. And another crazy thing to consider about a like to dislike ratio is that when you're watching a video to dislike, you are there almost exclusively to dislike. That a legitimate player is gonna look at this video and hit that dislike button, but a supportive player, someone that's using this guy legitimately, someone that has intent to hack, they're not always going to upvote the video. Okay, I want you to look at my channel, me's a little 800 sub channel. Let me know what you find in that like to dislike ratio. Vast majority of my videos do not have a lot of dislikes. There's like a few videos that have 10 or more. And you know what those videos have in common? They are on people or topics that have an audience that would dislike the video solely based on the subject. And keep in mind, my videos are subjective matter. I will not claim to speak for everyone, but I can honestly say that the majority of people do not dislike videos without setting out from the get-go to dislike the video, especially if it's a purely informational one like Verlicify is actually talking about. Hell, the fact that these are tutorials and guides shows how fucked up your logic is. If someone has no interest in using these methods of play, then they are less likely to click the video in the first place to give that dislike. So of course, a non-opinion based video is going to have fewer dislikes. Sometimes proof isn't needed. Sometimes you have to use your brain and pay fucking attention to what we're actually talking about. And another crazy thing to consider about a like to dislike ratio is that when you're watching a video to dislike, you are there almost exclusively to dislike. That a legitimate player is going to look at this video and hit that dislike button, but a supportive player, someone that's using this guide legitimately, someone that has intent to hack, they're not always going to upvote the video. So it could push the ratio of cheating to up to 90% or even more in the community. First off, you showed us a single video regarding PK hacks made by a creator of another language. One that barely makes the total views go over 1.5 million. Still not even a dent. You want to talk sample size, motherfucker? I did a search, my search being for PK Hex Sun, since I seriously doubt anyone would be talking about only Moon, and if they are, it's a fringe topic at best, and Sun's probably in the tags anyway. There are 23,000 results. So that front page bullshit, you know, the first 20 of that sample, yeah, even if you actually do sort it by view count, which for some reason I get the suspicion that you didn't do, but I'm not going to say that you didn't. Y yeah, still not even a fucking dent. Secondly, yes, you heard that right. Over 90% of the community cheats. 90%? 90%. 90%! See, here's the strange dichotomy with this video. I agree with you. 
Yes, Verlicify saying that it could be 90% of all Pokemon players using hacking tools is quite the stretch. And even if he was talking about 90% of the people who watch the video using these tools, that still doesn't add up since over half of those likes have to be from people who didn't immediately dislike the video as soon as they clicked on it, thus destroying his narrative. His video is full of shit. The problem I have here is that your video is also full of shit and you sound like a whiny butthurt fantard. But enough about what I'll probably say in my final thoughts. Let's get this shit show over with. Fucking pussy. And that goes to another thing is that the content that is created through hacking is going to be a lot more skewed. A lot of people are getting views that they don't deserve through exclusive gimmicks that you can only obtain through hacking, such as the No Lines mod. This is an illegal mod to the game that can only be done through unauthorized software and save modification. But because of that, it makes the game look prettier. People are going to click on it and watch for the content. And only because of this gimmick right here and not really much more, because it's going to stand out. It's going to look different, even though it's only obtainable through hacking and it offsets a lot of balance of content creation. Uh, okay. So this is the assassination of character you were talking about. While I think that Verlis saying that using hacks to make your game look different for the purposes of content creation is him talking out of his ass, my argument against him is somewhat similar to my argument against you. Shofu does, in fact, garner more viewership through his gameplay looking more unique than if his gameplay did not look more unique. And Verlis saying that Shofu would have less viewership, not no viewership, less viewership, if his gameplay did not have that unique look to it, is correct. On the other hand, Verlis, you're a fucking idiot. This doesn't disrupt the balance of content creation. This is the balance of content creation. That's like saying using good editing software disrupts the balance of content creation. Your stuff looks better, so more people will watch. And people will stop watching if you make bad content. But I'm sure Felicia fan will have us all account. I'm sorry. Can I call you something else? I cannot take that name seriously. Oh, no, 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 no. You are not going to drag Shofu into this. Shofu, someone who has legitimate talent and you have the gall to say that he's only getting extra views because of how pretty his gameplay looks. I mean, as I just said, he is getting extra views because of how pretty his gameplay looks. But I'll touch on that later. Your text and your screenshot are what really back you into a wall here. You call him out for using the three words that Shofu used to describe him. You have just insulted Shofu far more than Verlis did. Congratulations. Uh, BT Dubs, remember that whole thing earlier about how Verlis provides no context? You showed the context and ignored it. I'd say that's worse. I mean, yeah, you shouldn't be talking down to people, but then again, neither should you. And yet this entire video exists, so, eh. Oh, sure, but of course, that's totally the reason. It's not because people actually like watching his content, have been watching it for years, and just enjoy what he does. No, it's because of his pretty graphics. Um. Yeah, what about the people who haven't been watching Shofu for years? Yeah, newsflash, not everyone knows who everyone is, even among the Pokemon community. To go back to your argument from earlier, Shofu has 646,418 subscribers as of the scripting of this video. Even though none of his videos from the past month have over 200,000 views, let's just operate under the assumption that there are just as many people not subscribed that watch his stuff as there are people who are subscribed that watch his stuff. That gives us a pretty high estimate on how many watch Shofu. I'm going to say 1.3 million just to be as generous as possible. Remember that sales figure of 25 million worldwide you stated earlier? We're at 5.2% of that. Not even a fucking dent, as you would say. So. To say that there aren't Pokemon fans who discover his content because of the unique look of his gameplay in his thumbnail is, quite frankly, an absurd assumption. Again, I do agree with you that Verlizify is wrong to make it sound like Shofu doesn't deserve those views, and there is a percentage of them that will not like his personality and decide to not continue watching more of his content, because not everyone is going to like everyone either, thus being viewership that he does not retain. But the fact remains that there are extra views being gained, which you 
imply is not happening. It is, but that doesn't mean it's not deserved. I can't believe you're having trouble arguing against this point. Fucking pussy. And you know what? I'm sure someone just called me a Shofu fanboy because I said that. I guarantee that it has someone just called me a kiss ass. But that's not the case. This is a blatant attack of his character, that he wouldn't be able to sustain views without the need to make his game look the way it does. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back that fucking hate train up to the station. Sustain? Okay, he didn't say anything about sustaining anything. You even said that he was talking about extra views. So your narrative is shooting itself in the foot. Either he's saying that Shofu can't get views at all, or he's saying that Shofu is getting more because of the mod. You're trying to say both now, and that doesn't work. I understand that the way he presented this is an unwarranted attack against Shofu. Absolutely agree with you there. But considering you've spent this entire video launching insults towards Verlicify, I'd say this is a case where I understand someone calling you a butthurt fanboy. Can't say I blame you, don't get me wrong, but uh... Maybe if you're calling Verlicify scum of the earth, you shouldn't do the same thing you're calling him scum of the earth for doing? I'm, I'm just saying. Fucking pussy. And then we can also see access to stuff that shouldn't be available yet, such as legendary Pokemon. None of the Pokemon in this thumbnail are currently available inside Pokemon Moon. This is supposed to be post-Pokemon Bank, but pre-Pokemon Bank, you can hack all this stuff in, and then you can use it for the views that you would not have legal access to otherwise. And it's also through Z-moves, exclusives that haven't been unlocked yet, people just, you know, scumbagging those views from our shadow, anything like that. So it's not making it fair content creation that people that are getting access to the legendaries legitimately, waiting for the Pokebank transfer, and then doing it legally, they're going to lose out on views. You know, videos like this, all Z-moves showing, you know, the exclusive Z-moves, the exclusive Pokemon that aren't available yet, and stuff like that. And it also does translate Translate back into battles. That if you're creating teams in five minutes overnight, you're having a wider variety of content. You're able to put out battles in a quicker amount of time compared to people that are not hacking. So there's a lot of issues right there. And then it also just kind of means that the gameplay mechanics and guides are going to be overlooked. So I think that that's a big part of what I do with my channel. I've noticed it that you know who's going to look up a breeding guide when everyone's cheating. Why why should, would I waste my time doing breeding when PK hacks is a lot easier? Is what a lot of people end up resorting to. Same for item locations. Same for all of the island scanning. Same for pretty much every mechanic in the game. Hey, you know your example about how the person that first discovered focus attack dash cancel isn't automatically the best player? Yeah, that applies here. Seriously, you say that stuff like breeding has nothing to do with competitive battling. Yet here you are saying that the reason no one would care about his guides on a mechanic that again, according to you, doesn't assist competitive batting in any way is because he's got a bad competitive record. If you're saying that the in-game means of raising Pokemon has nothing to do with competitive battling, then why the fuck are you saying that his videos on the in-game means of raising Pokemon should be judged based on his competitive record? And you also assume everyone knows Verlicify even was a competitive battler. I had no idea personally, but I don't follow the competitive scene that closely, at least not of the video game. I'd even say there's a possibility that there is a correlation between his competitive record and the fact that he doesn't use these tactics. Although I don't know if people actually get away for using this in their real teams or if they use it for playtesting purposes and build the team legitimately on a separate cartridge once they know what they want, but you've said that these things have nothing to do with each other. So clearly, judging his ability to know how to raise Pokemon in-game with his ability to play competitively is faulty logic on your part. Fucking pussy. Also, you seem to love talking about videos made off of content that nobody has access to. Gee, I wonder where I've seen that before. I wonder where I've seen the exact same thing done. What is this? What is this, Verlis? Is this content you're making off of content that nobody has access to in order to make as much money as possible, and in a larger abundance than any other Poketuber other than the actual uploader of the data mining? You bet your ass it is! But don't worry people, if he's done it, it's okay, because he's the human equivalent of castration, I mean perfection. Okay, even your own narrative points to the fact that he could have easily been making content he didn't want to make because he knew he would be at a disadvantage for not reporting on it. Yes, I know that he kind of contradicts this later, but he's not contradicting this now, so this is the wrong place for you to be making this point. And another thing, too, you seem to assume that the majority of Pokemon players are competitive. 
Well, considering the fact that Smogging.com, the largest compendium of primarily competitive information online, has a little over 2.5 million hits a month, even if we assume all those hits are from different people, which our chart even states would be a blatant lie, by the way, that's still only 10% of all Pokemon players. Now, of course, it's very possible that there are competitive players that don't use Smogging as well, but I think you see my point. That whole not even a fucking dent that the hacking community has, it applies here as well. I will give you that it's more on Smogin than it is on the hacking community numbers you provided earlier, but it still applies. Oh, and uh, before you even try to debunk me with foreign language, I think you're forgetting about the translations board on the forums, which means Smogin's numbers do include those foreign markets more so than the English language YouTube videos do. So, um, your move. Fucking pussy. Undermines a lot of the factors of the game that people rely on for guides, such as myself and many other content creators that are trying to do it legitimately, but then just kind of getting screwed over because, you know, what's the point of watching all this when you could cheat? Well, that and the thought of, why would I want to watch content of this nature from a man who has little to no knowledge about competitive Pokemon, does nothing but insult others, and just plays shitty music over a webpage, when I can watch content from people who actually put effort into their guides, also comes to mind. Hold up. Doing research. <laughs> Wolf Glick's guides are strictly about how to use Pokemon competitively, while Verlicify's guides are related to collecting items and raising Pokemon, like we said. And like he is actually talking about. I mean, Verlicify has some guides about builds, but that's not what he's talking about here. You're comparing apples to oranges, sir. By the way, see what I mean with the constant insults, people? Let me make something clear for you. If you don't like his presentation, that's fine but you are like the most toxic form of commentator to legitimately attack him for that. Especially since he's doing that to display information and evidence of what he's talking about. It, it, it's not how I would do it, not by a long shot, but a method that requires less effort isn't automatically bad, especially since I'm doing more editing than you by having an avatar on screen and multiple characters that haven't shown up for a while for some reason. I never said I would participate. Of course not. A anyway, not to mention the fact that I've done some animation in my video. Appreciate the text on screen to make some extra bad points for you, buddy, but don't go saying that the effort in editing automatically makes a video better than someone else's and then say I'm wrong, because so far, I've debunked all of your arguments, especially the fact that you're literally putting words in his mouth by saying he's calling people who don't watch his videos hackers. I mean, he did say, and other people, and what's worse about this is that you try to say that his content doesn't get views because other people do what he's doing better, when the fact of the matter is, he's just wrong about his content not getting views. In fact, let me just address this next point to Relicify. Your breeding guide has over 500,000 views. Not only does this make this the top breeding guide on YouTube, since the only videos in my search for sun breeding guide with more views aren't even actual guides to breeding, but probably just there because of coincidence. It also has double the view count you showed for a foreign language PK hex guide. I understand getting to a problem before it legitimately becomes highly toxic, but if people who hack truly don't care about using in-game methods, then your guides wouldn't have double the traction of any hacking tutorial. Y y you see, Felicia? You see how easy it is to make his entire narrative fall apart when you don't spend all your time launching insults? The fact that you can't do that is exactly why I'm here. Not only can I debunk you, but I can debunk Verlicify while I'm at it, and you know what, tough guy? I can go another 20. I don't get it. It's an incredibly obscure AJ Styles reference that I used in a previous commentary. Oh. And now I suddenly don't care. Yep, that's a normal reaction. On top of the major citation needed for said statement in general, as some of the people you have taken shots at in the past have also put out said type of guides, but since they hack, they essentially don't count in your eyes. Um, his statement doesn't even list off any names other than himself, so you are definitely talking out of your ass, especially since, once again... You seem to be confusing someone telling someone how to use Pokemon in competitive battling and what stats and moves to give it with how to use in-game mechanics to raise Pokemon and obtain items. Which, 
once again, is so easy to debunk, I ought to slap you in the face for your inability to actually argue with him. Since what you need to keep in mind is that I haven't been following this whole drama festival involving Verlicify, and I still disproved his argument with like three seconds of research. Imagine how much further I could go if I knew what you did about him. And then it goes even deeper into that because I think a big reason why we are seeing so many global mission fails is through the sheer amount of insanity when it comes to cheating. That Two things. First off, you clearly don't think. You've made that quite apparent enough, so stop trying to act like you're going anywhere. You're just looking for another opportunity to take a shot at hackers. Okay, honestly, this is a point I was tempted to skip over without there even being an interjection, but I know someone would get onto me for playing for Lucify's point and then skipping what you're saying. Then again, what the fuck am I supposed to say here? This is blatant proof of your goddamn biasness and pettiness. I mean, I guess I could mention that you cut him off in the middle of his point to tell him that he doesn't think like an even bigger idiot than you're making him out to be. And definitely a bigger idiot than he actually is, so that's new. But seriously, this is just further proof that you've made this video solely for the purposes of salt. So don't be surprised if there are skip screens in the middle of the video now, because shit like this isn't worth my time. Oh, and for anyone who wants to call my shit out for being petty fantardation, yeah, you do not know what you're talking about when shit like this still exists. Second, stop calling it cheating. It's not cheating. It doesn't fall under any form of cheating. It's not a fucking race. Stop blatantly misusing the English language, you slack-jawed, unkept mongoloid. You know, I could just say that I already debunked this, but, uh, the sad thing is that Verlicify is going to do a better job than I did at proving you wrong later. Oh, and, uh, uh, thanks for summarizing your whole video in a single hashtag. Appreciate it. Other YouTubers and stuff, you know, by doing videos like this, they're condoning cheating. By having roulettes and all these kind of free-for-alls and all these battles where you're using hacked Pokemon every day and you're ginning these Pokemon and you're using illegal copies of the game to gain access to the content faster, you know, because of all this, the viewers are going to watch this and think, it's okay. It's okay to cheat. It's okay to hack. It's okay to battle with hacked Pokemon. And we can see that resonate throughout the community as more and more people start to side by cheating. How many times can you blatantly misuse a very easy to understand word in a single paragraph? Seriously, how many times? Okay, how about I put this in terms you can fucking understand. So let's say I'm playing Hearthstone. I hack the game so I have all the cards I need to build the deck I want. I still have to be able to pilot the decks in order to play, but I can adjust to the metagame in an instant because I will always have access to the cards without having to spend either time or money as a resource to acquire them. Does that mean I'm not cheating? The same concept works for any digital card game. So I've pretty much given all of those examples. So let me just go to Magic the Gathering for a moment. Yeah, I can use the digital card game advantage there too, but just, just work with me here. So let's say I hack into Wizards of the Coast's shipment database in order to get them to send me four copies of every single card in Standard for free. Extreme example, but work with me here. Does that mean I'm not cheating? Sure, I still need the deck building skills in order to make the deck, but since I can make whatever I want without spending any resources that I haven't already spent, then I can easily swap out my $30 to $40 Mythics without having to spend money on $30 to $40 Mythics. But those are just examples that involve someone being able to use money in order to circumvent the system already. So I'm sure you can make the argument that you can pay to cheat if you want. Here's the difference with that though. The ability to pay for things is built into those games as a second form of balance. The people with less money are more likely to have more time so they'll be able to spend the time and vice versa. It's not cheating because there's absolutely nothing dishonest going on. You're just taking advantage of the rules that are in place. And in Magic's case, there is no time sink factor. So what you're really doing there is stealing the cards. And yeah, fair enough. Circumventing Magic's built-in mechanic of wanting you to pay money? Absolutely worse. But to circumvent the time sinks built into Pokemon to slow down the acceleration of the metagame and give people more gameplay time for their dollar, that, that isn't cheating? Yeah, tell Brian Kibler, Amaz, 
Disguised Toast, or any fucking competitive Hearthstone player that hacking into Hearthstone isn't cheating, and let me know how quickly they laugh in your face. It's the same damn thing, but you know what? Verlicify would show why you're not a race thing is invalid for a competitive game that's more about strategy than reflexes if you wouldn't cut him off. But aside from that, good to see you still have the incessant need to take shots at Callum and Duncan because they play the game their own way and have been doing so for years now. Again, I'm sorry that they know how to edit and you are completely inept when it comes to the concept, as well as the fact that they have a far more enjoyable personality and attitude. Seriously, that right there was beyond petty. Um, what the fuck are you talking about? I have no idea what him talking about global mission fails has to do with Callum and Duncan who are, or whoever the fuck that is. Hey, remember one of your basic tenets of a Verlicify video? You know, lack of context? Yeah, here it is again on your part. Also, no, nothing in Shofu's video inspires cheating, especially since it's not fucking cheating! Is Shofu gaining an advantage in-game by making his game prettier? Do the lines hinder the Pokémon in any way, shape, or form? Did Shofu in any way promote the no-line glitch? No! The answer to all those questions is a no, and if you think otherwise, kindly hand over the rights to your brain because you clearly aren't using it properly. See? I knew you could do it! You actually debunked something that Verlicify legitimately said! No, maybe commentating on this won't take his- Why is there so much time left in the timeline of this video? Stan, that you see so many of these people are like, Oh yeah, it's okay to cheat. You look at any other game, no one thinks that. You look at any other aspect of life, no one thinks that. No one thinks, oh, it's okay to break the law just because I'm better than the law or something. No, no one thinks these things legitimately. But the Pokemon community has been flipped turned upside down by all the greed and all of the laziness to try to get that content to the viewers and then pretend like it's an okay thing to do. That way they don't get hated upon and then it just kind of you know, leads to a lot of other things. Okay, before you even speak, did you seriously just say that he's wrong to compare breaking the rules with breaking the rules? Oh, and I found further proof that hacking is cheating. From the Pokemon Company themselves. Rule 4.1 of the Pokemon VGC Rules, Format, and Penalty Guidelines. Illegally manipulated Pokemon. The use of external devices, such as a mobile app or your computer, before the event, as a more relevant example, to modify or create items or Pokemon in a player's battle team is expressly forbidden. Players found to have Pokemon or items that have been tampered with may be disqualified from the competition, regardless of whether the Pokemon or items belong to that player or were traded for. In other words, Felicia, hacking is quite literally against the rules, as stated by the rules. I do agree with you that something like the no-lines glitch would not really matter, as I have throughout this video, but your whole hacking isn't cheating ar argument? Thrown in the trash considering your whole it's just breaking the rules argument is also thrown in the trash. I don't know if you know this, clearly not, but roll with me on this, but there's something in life called a gray scale. There are many shades of gray in between black and white. Clearly you don't understand this, as every comparison with you is either polar opposites, or extremes of one another. How the hell did you compare the law to Pokemon? Like they can even be remotely put on the same level of importance and you won't be laughed out of the fucking building for making it. Okay, that's really simple. The law is a set of rules and the rules of Pokemon are also a set of rules. Why is that so fucking hard for you to understand? And there is a black and white of whether you break the rules or do not break the rules. I agree with you that the No Lines mod is bending the rules as opposed to breaking them at best and doesn't hurt anything. And I agree with you that him acting like the No Lines mod is some kind of gateway drug is ridiculous. But come on. You don't know how breaking the rules compares to breaking the rules? Get your hat out of your ass. You are essentially comparing Jenning to murder at this point. Whoa, 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 what? Oh, okay, that is a huge stretch. Now who's operating on black and white principles? Him bringing up the law means he's comparing it to murder? That's so big of a stretch, even Mr. Fantastic thinks you should calm your tits. Or assault, or rape, or many other things that don't even come close to hacking. It's funny because those crimes don't have the same penalties as each other and you're ignoring the fact that crimes have multiple severities. 
Being caught with a hacked team in Pokemon will get you booted from that tournament, and to my knowledge, nothing more. Funny thing, that appears to be the most severe penalty they dish out in the VGC rules. So, although definitely less of a serious matter than something like murder, the comparison suddenly becomes apt by your logic because they are both rules that, if broken, have the highest penalty attached to them possible within their rule set, even though that's not even what he was going for. In fact, the fact that he brings up legality when talking about hacking the game? It's a gray area to even say that's a comparison. Okay, while well, hacking isn't against the law when it comes to simply casual play or doing it for fun, it will violate the game's terms of service. Any game with online play has one. They can't really stop you from using hacks and mods in single player if you want to, but what the company has every legal right to do is ban you from online play. And if that happens, you're also banned from competitive play. However, once we actually enter competitive play, that's where hacking becomes that legit gray area. Remember that gray area you were talking about? I've seen some conflicting reports on the legality of hacking, but I feel the most relevant source of this information is a link I provided in the description from HackerBot, which confirms that doing so without profit is, in fact, perfectly fine from a legal perspective, and the worst that will happen is that you'll get banned. Basically, the only way to know for sure that you won't be considered in violation of the law when you're making a profit, including, for example, tournament winnings, is to just make educational content of the matter, thus falling under fair use. So, the worst part about what you're saying about his comparison not being valid is that you should be able to use that against him by pointing out that very little of the YouTube content that he provided as primary examples would fall under any form of law like hacking for tournament play or just battling on your channel would. His primary example could be considered illegal in some cases, but again, the worst that Shofu is going to face is a ban on that cartridge or system simply because it's not something the Pokemon company is likely to care about. Fucking pussy. Also, you repugnant little kiss-ass, the rules of Pokemon in of themselves are awful. They're legitimately terrible, quite possibly being the worst rules ever put forward by a competitive game. I've also talked about this before. Said video is in the description. And the most I'm going to say regarding the topic, again, is that the rules of Pokemon are going to kill the competitive aspect far sooner than anything any hacker could possibly do to the game. Just because you think the rules should be different doesn't mean they don't exist. And you know what? I can actually counter this almost entirely. Your entire argument is that Pokemon's rules are bad competitively because it has a random aspect to it. First of all, every trading card game ever would like to have a word with you. You see, when making a turn-based game meant to be played between two players or teams on opposing sides, a random aspect is actually necessary because the physical skill of being able to execute is taken away in favor of more mental skill. A random element also adds extra calculations into that formula and allows a format to never truly be solved, something I'm going to get into later by the way. There will always be some form of variable that will make the game more interesting, especially in a game like Pokemon where random elements like critical hits, accuracy, and variations on damage output are completely out of the control of the player in the vast majority of the cases. As opposed to magic where you get to take mulligans to have a better starting hand you can have card draw to give yourself better odds of having what you need and other card selection mechanics such as scry in fact little known fact the most random format of magic draft is actually one of its most loved competitively and is used in professional play because it is more or less a raw test of skill as it tests pretty much every skill needed to play Magic, despite the fact that you're mostly at the mercy of whatever you and the rest of the table happen to open in your packs. But the main crux of your problem with Pokemon's rules consists of breeding, which is completely ridiculous when you consider that you yourself consider the amount of time sunk into breeding, four hours according to you, to be insignificant. So I counter that with your own words. Who cares? It's just four hours. And while they are trying to reduce the need for breeding in Pokemon in favor of mechanics that have you battling in order to gain the rewards to build your team more effectively, they aren't going to completely take out breeding. Let's be honest here. IVs have hyper training. E EVs could probably use a method closer to super training again, but that doesn't really involve breeding at all. And 
Egg moves don't involve random chance, so the only dice rolling there is is hidden power, if your Pokemon even uses it, and natures, which takes a hell of a lot less time than IV breeding. In fact, I could breed a whole team for just natures in like 30 minutes, so you still want to complain about that, you sure? In that case, why not complain about Hearthstone having booster packs, or Street Fighter having unlockable characters? After all, you can still use a Pokemon in competitive play that you just played with in the main story. It simply won't be as good as a more tuned Pokemon. Conversely, you can play with the starter decks in Hearthstone, you can play with a character in Street Fighter without knowing all of your matchups, but you'll be at a disadvantage for doing so. And that's another thing about Pokemon that you're missing. No other game has a mandatory single player campaign before getting to compete against others. I mean, sure, the amount of time you spend in single player before you have access to multiplayer is very short, normally about a tenth of the story, but since according to you, having all competitive tools at your disposal is needed from the outset in order to have a game be pick up and play, wouldn't that mean even games like League of Legends are killing themselves competitively by not having all characters unlocked from the outset? And notice how almost all of the competitive aspects of Pokemon come in post-game. Like it or not, Pokemon is very clearly not made to be out of the box competitive, and other competitive games prove the fact that it doesn't even need to be competitive out of the box in order to be a good competitive game. I agree with you that improvements could be made, but honestly, those improvements need to be part of the post game because that's where the competitive aspect belongs based on what the creators of the game clearly intend for it. You look at it, what's the point of having any of the game's content? That there's no reason to play in Pokemon and that's, that's what people do. They get far enough ahead in the story to where they can actually play the game and then they just hack in everything and then it doesn't matter anymore. So not getting access to the items that are required for actually playing the game legitimately and then just by doing all those skips, people get upset at the game. Like, oh, there wasn't enough Pokemon introduced. Well. When we're, when we're not hacking and we're trying to explore the game at the pace that it was intended, we'll learn different things about the different Pokemon, we'll also learn different things about where items are supposed to be found and everything like that. So what you're saying is that if you think there weren't enough Pokemon in the game, you're a hacker. Am, am I hearing that correctly? Because you directly correlate the two together and there is nothing that states otherwise. See, I'm on your side here. Although the point about failing global missions appears to support his argument, He's not taking into consideration that players who don't hack not being aware of global missions exist, especially considering the global mission that occurred after this video happened quadrupled the requirement. But that's not lack of context, really. He wouldn't have had any way to know that. That's him coming to a conclusion based on evidence, and you should be showing that the evidence doesn't lead to that conclusion rather than just throwing context required on the screen. But whatever, I'm used to you not actually arguing with him by now. The fact that this generation introduced the second lowest number of outright new Pokemon of any generation is also a factor in why people would think that the game introduced too few Pokemon. Although, I'd say that perhaps the reason that they do that this time is because one, it fits with the setting, and two, conservation of design space. If they use all of their ideas at once, then it can affect the longevity of being able to add new ideas to the game. You could have done more to explain a reason other than hacking that someone may find for there to be too few Pokemon, but honestly, your text at least did part of that job. See, I'm not all negative. I can point out when you do a good thing. I like you better when you're negative. I'm gay. I wasn't hitting on you. Oh. So yes, people, Verlus is telling you that if you think there weren't enough Pokemon in the game, you're a hacker. Might as well add on that you own a 6 IV shiny ditto if you think there isn't enough Pokemon. Don't look at it for too long, or it might steal your girlfriend. The fuck was that? Much better. I'm sorry, but was that an attempt at a joke? Because, I mean, I felt the delivery was just way off the mark. Your voice didn't really have any emotion while delivering the punchline, and I feel that the impact would have been better if you just cut the music there. Hey, remember all that talk about lazy editing earlier? Yeah, it kind of applies here. It also felt forced in because you didn't think this interjection was funny enough, or at the least that's the impression I got, so... I, I mean, dude, you could easily just have ended it with your point. It's fine to do that every now and again, especially if this is your other option. Holy fuck. Deja vu, I've just been in this place before Higher on the street and I know it's my time to go Hold. The. Fuck. Up. 
What you just skipped disproves your entire it's not a race argument. With all the access to hacks and stuff, the metagame accelerates at an unintended pace and then it stagnates way sooner than it was expected to and then the creativity just goes away because everyone just copy pastes the same team, gins it up instead of putting any practice and application into creating the team and yeah, it just becomes copy and paste. So then everyone starts complaining even though they're a cause of the problem because they are playing the game unintended. Felicia, let me ask you a question. How much innovation is there in... Let's use something I know you'll be familiar with. Darkstalkers 3. Not much is there, if any at all. And uh, how big is the competitive community for that game at this point? Small, almost non-existent. Ah, but I suppose you'll use the obscurity of that game as an excuse. Fair enough. What about something like, say, Street Fighter 4? More recent, and yet the tech for the game lately that's been found has been slow to a crawl. Ah, but that's a game that uses real-time combat and Pokemon is turn-based. Okay, okay, fair enough. Let's take a look at the life cycle of Standard in Magic the Gathering. For the first month or so, most everything competitive is Standard and the metagame is shifting. Then, a few weeks after the Pro Tour, the metagame settles down into a comfort zone in Standard and everybody pretty much knows the decks that are the most powerful and least powerful and how the matchups work out. So there's far less discovery, although there is still some discovery, and people shift their attention to formats like Modern more so than Standard. The new set comes out and the cycle repeats itself. This is a concept known as solving a format. You see, there are only a finite number of options in any given game, and the more time you have to discover all the options available and know what the best option to use at any given situation is, then the less likely you are to discover anything new. That's why no one's discovering new options in chess. It's because all the possibilities available have been explored and the rules of chess haven't changed in decades. Now, of course, the games we're talking about have aspects to prevent a true solution whether it be random elements or physical execution, but especially in the case of games like Magic and Pokemon, whose competitive aspects are built on strategy and planning first and foremost, the best solution can be found and a game can be mostly solved, resulting in stagnation of innovation, simply because there is an option that will be more useful against what the best strategies are. And that will also be the best strategy because it will be able to fight the other best strategies. When information gets to the public too quickly, formats get solved more quickly than they should, and thus a change in the game needs to rekindle competitive interest. In Magic, they change the competitive game of Standard four times a year, so people having access to info on all the options isn't such a bad thing, although a format can wind up solved in about two months if it's a bit too simple to solve. Pokemon releases new additions and changes to its format once a year at best, so it needs to have something to slow it down so it can evolve at a pace that allows for the next change to come before interest wanes too heavily. Now, there is a natural acceleration of this solving of formats that comes with the internet, which Magic is in the process of adjusting to and Pokemon has adjusted to by having new changes come more quickly. That's part of the reason changes come once a year more often now. There's also more information to digest, so they definitely have more time than Magic does when it comes to changing something in the format. However, the reason Verlicify calls time sinks, like breeding and the battle tree, an argument you've ignored this whole time, by the way, necessary is because if you could just have whatever team you like from the outset, then the metagame would evolve closer to Magic's two to four month cycle, and the format would be solved too quickly for developers to be able to keep in other words, this argument about Verlicify is absolutely right to the point. And it's not one that requires him to specifically know Pokemon's meta, he just has to know metagaming in general. Affecting the Pokemon company negatively, but they refuse to do anything about it because it's such a big issue and it has so much support. That if the Pokemon community makes too big of a stand against cheating, then it loses support from the people that are playing the game and cheating anyways, especially in VGC where a majority of competitive players and top tier worlds players are using illegal Pokemon very regularly at main events. That if you crack down on that, well, what do you do when you lose a majority of your top 64 players to playing illegally and then you realize that some of these people are even world champions or national champions from the past? Oh, how can I forget? This wouldn't be a real Verlicify video on cheating. 
cheating if they didn't find the need to take a completely unwarranted and lowbrow shot at the VGC with absolutely no proof on whether or not said players cheat. Which of course is a lowbrow shot at the real wolf of the Pokemon community, Wolf Glick. See, there's another good point on your end. Honestly, he doesn't have any real proof of cheating that he's presented here. I mean, in order to show that he was going after a specific person, you could probably point out the videos he's already done on Wolf Glick. Or else I'm just left taking your word for it, thus leaving you doing the exact same thing that you're correctly getting onto him for doing. But uh, I was able to find the evidence for myself easily enough. That's not a big deal. I mean, my god, it must be second nature to just hate people that are better human beings than you. Because you're on an absolute roll with this video, man. Gotta say, all you need is another lowbrow shot at Jethrotex and Tyranitar Tube, and the video will truly feel complete. And if you had just shut the fuck up and moved on, I wouldn't feel like a jackass for complimenting you. Seriously, for how much shit you give Verlicify for petty pot shots, you sure do like to take every opportunity to call him a bad human being. I wouldn't have a problem with this if you didn't get onto him for petty pot shots. I mean, I get that Verlicify is basically the desolator magic of the Pokemon community, but with how you're acting, does that make you the tasty snackies of the Pokemon community? No one's going to get that reference. It clearly needed to be made though! Wait, you actually know who that is? No, I don't. That's why I know no one will get it. Fucking pussy. Hello? Hello? You're in the space between skip screens. Oh. Me? Fucking pussy. I think it's hurting every single aspect of Pokemon. That any of the game's features, those are all being undermined, all the way up to the competitive scene. That we cannot have a serious competitive scene with the amount of cheating that is going on. And somehow it even spills over into YouTube because everyone's so desperate for that YouTube money. Everyone's so desperate for the views that they're going to go and throw out the content that we don't have access to yet, but it's only available through hacking. Pouring out for views on YouTube. <clears throat> Check. Your mother fucking privilege. You are the absolute last person who should even open their mouth on anything regarding the subject. Someone who uploads videos multiple times a day with little to no value. But hey, they're all over 10 minutes so you can get that extra revenue from your quote unquote content. Yeah, he really should not be talking about being desperate for views. See, the difference between getting onto him for reporting the, on the data mine and getting onto him for spitting out content like a Pez dispenser is that, for one, this is something that Verlis is still doing, and for two, he's actually judging someone morally at this point based on their content, whereas before he was just pointing out that it screwed with the system. And now I'll be skipping your insults that add absolutely nothing to your point and just serve to paint you as a hypocrite because goddamn have I made that point enough in this commentary. Also, while yes, they have access to content that nobody has yet, I can at least understand why it exists in the first place. People want to know about stuff ahead of time. Clearly you do as well, seeing how you made the most amount of videos regarding the Sun and Moon demo leak out of any major Poketuber. But god forbid if you aren't the one posting it, that makes it bad. No, people want to see this kind of content, hence why it's popular. Oh. You actually had to do your argument for once. I mean, I'd argue that he's probably just saying that they shouldn't have access to it, and that just because people are interested, that doesn't mean that it's right to have access to that information. But I wouldn't even agree with that argument anyway, and I'm just glad we're getting through an interjection without you spouting off some inane ins- And it has a reason to exist because of it, unlike your videos. ARE YOU FUCKING KIDDING ME?! Didn't know humans could sound like a dog whistle. Okay, I'm not even playing your examples because the entire part of the interjection is completely irrelevant to what's being said in this video! But from the sounds of things, those videos sound like speculation. Yeah, nobody has an interest in speculation whatsoever! So, not only is this a blatant pot shot against someone you keep calling an awful human being because of his pot shots at others, mind you, it's not even correct! And did you seriously miss the opportunity to make a joke about how old I am with the Pez Dispenser reference? I'm 5,000 years old. Oh. Fucking pussy. Do you feel like Pokemon has been getting bad since Omega Green off Sapphire? Do you feel like there's too many cheaters that you feel like Sun and Moon just 
there's something missing. You know, there's a lot of heart. There's a lot of the spirit of Pokemon that has been completely stripped away by the insane amount of cheating and the same amount of insane amount of hacking support. So don't worry if you're thinking this. It's not just you. It's the hackers. It's the community ruining all the features of the game, ruining everything that the Pokemon Company and Game Freak has worked so hard for, just for their own gain and for their own laziness, because they think they're better than you. They think they're better than everyone else. That's really the only mentality that comes off from this hacking. So, no. No, 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 no. Listen to me, you insufferable piece of shit. The only one here who even remotely thinks he is better than anyone is you. Listen, I own an Action Replay DS. I have done genning in Black and White, Black and White 2, Hard Gold, Soul Silver, and Platinum. And I do not, by any means, think I am better than you people listening. You know why? Because I know what it takes to be a good battler. And it can't be bought on a tiny little cartridge or downloaded in a zip file. That is just a means to an end. To be a great battler means you know about matchups. You study the meta. You know how to build your teams in a fashion that they have safe and reliable coverage. You have strong decision making skills that can be the key factor to securing a win from anything to with a friend for fun or out on the world championship stage. The player in control is always the one who should be loved and respected, and that is true for any competitive game out there. So listen to me, you 0-3 piece of garbage. This doesn't make me a better trainer, and I know for a fact that a majority of people who use cheating devices think that way. Yes, I know I didn't fast forward through any of this, but there's a reason I did that, and that's because... Well, I think it's important to note that Felicia does definitely know what he's talking about. He's absolutely right that at the end of the day, constructing your team properly is what's most important, and that it is not affected by whether you generate the Pokemon through hacking or raise them naturally. However, at the end, he just uses his own experiences as proof. And you know what that leads to? The exact same toxicity that's been coming from Verlicify this entire time. I think that's the biggest problem with this video. Even though Verlicify does have a point that there are negative repercussions to hacking, he's blowing those negative repercussions way out of proportions and in a few cases, outright making stuff up. And there are a few places where you do a good job of debunking him. But then the end of that statement becomes important. This entire commentary, you spent a ton of time acting like a butthurt fanboy, for lack of a better way to put it. And the fact that you claim to speak for the majority of hackers at the end simply because you use hacking yourself is akin to Verlicify claiming to speak for all legitimate players. Speaking as someone who doesn't use any form of hacking when he plays Pokemon unless doing something like a randomizer and an older title for fun, I really don't care if your Pokemon are generated from PK Hex as long as they would be legal otherwise. Speaking of someone who has had no problem in the past using an action replay or other method of technically cheating to duplicate hard to obtain items that are needed in multiples, the reason I'm less inclined to go that route now is because of the fact that Game Freak is making it that much easier to obtain things legitimately. I'm willing to see both the good and the bad of hacking's existence and can honestly say that I think the pros outweigh the cons the majority are going to play the game legitimately, and Pokemon has ways to enforce the use of in-game means to create their team for an official tournament if they really want to. Which, it sounds like they do, despite what Verlicify was trying to say here. I can understand your anger here, Felicia, since you're someone who's clearly straight up targeted by what Verlicify is saying in this video. But that would be exactly the reason to either not make this video at all, or take more time on it because your heavily emotionally charged responses make you look like you were exactly the type of person Verlicify was calling you. And exactly the type of person you were calling Verlicify. I would give you some advice, but you already partially gave it to yourself after where I ended. You said you were taking a break talking about Verlicify, but I would say stop talking about him at all unless it's really, and I mean, really absolutely necessary. As I pointed out before, seven of the 17 videos on your channel have Verlicify in the name, and four of those 17 videos were before the first video with his name in the title. That means that since you started talking about Verlicify, 
over half of the entirety of your content library has been about him. And that's discounting any other videos where you brought him up without putting his name in the title. Since I know your video on cheating did that right at the outset. Quite frankly, it seems like you're obsessed with the guy. And that's probably the worst kind of toxicity there is. So again, by all means, cover him. But do me a favor if you do. Do yourself a favor if you do, as a matter of fact. Approach it purely from a rational and logical standpoint. I think you'd be surprised how much of an idiot you get to make him look like if you do that. Trust me, I know how much more it hurts. I've done it. All right, are you finally done? Jesus Christ, it took you long enough. Your fault for giving me something about competitive gaming and complex ethics. Uh, valid. All right, go get the orb. Elias? Yo! I got the orb! Elias? Sorry, Boone. Escaflone's been cancelled. That's not how you pronounce Escaflone!